In a world of increasing specialization, how do we understand deeply technical subjects, which impact all of our lives? For that matter, when we live in a time of a global health crisis, how do we find out what we need to survive in the short term? What is truth? What is misleading us? It's very difficult to tell. We all have a need to understand much more difficult subjects that were just way outside of our expertise. But I think that there are some handy tips that I've accumulated over the years, and I would love to know what you have come to understand. Now, first of all, some background. I have been a writer in technical fields for quite a long time. I often say that my job is to translate technobabble into English. I don't do this all the time, but it's something I have done quite a bit. My actual degree is in chemical engineering, uh, but I have practiced this with all kinds of different things, particularly information technology. There's a lot of demand for it. Does this mean I know exactly what I'm talking about? No. I have to rely on subject matter experts through interviews, sort of a journalistic process, to find out what they're talking about and then write an article that hopefully explains it. The problem with technical subjects is that there is a, always a need to have some credentials inherent in the article. A certain use of jargon or technical terms is very, very useful to establish that I know, or the person who is being interviewed knows what they're talking about. There are standard techniques for making this process transparent, making it uh, user-friendly and readable. One of them is, for example, whenever you introduce a piece of jargon or a uh, TLA, a three-letter acronym, you first sit down and explain it. From that point forward, you can use TLA as much as you want. This is a standard practice, but it's useful not just because you have this convenient shorthand now, you've got an acronym that you can use, but it also establishes your credentials. I know something about the field. Most people who are experts in a field, especially a very narrow field, have a hard time explaining themselves to friends and family. They're kind of used to this. And they have some standard explanations where they go out of their way to explain what it is they're talking about in fairly short sentences. Sometimes it's extremely difficult. They might sort of bleep over a topic. This is going to happen. But a genuine expert who has been an expert in a field for a while is going to have some ability or at least going to make some effort to explain what the heck they're talking about. Now, there are always articles of different levels of expertise. An expert talking to an expert might write an article that you and I are just not going to understand. What do you do with such an article? My advice is very simple. If you don't understand it, either discard it or file it away saying, this seems to be talking about something I need to know about, but I can't possibly understand it. You need to be very honest about what you're understanding and what you're not. And that's very, very common. I can't tell you how many articles about various economic topics that I had to do that with and come back to them as much as a year later before I could understand what was going on. You may want to even write down topics that are, are in there that you need to understand a little bit more about, pieces of jargon, words that you need to do some research on specifically. The other possibility, if people are throwing around big words, is what I call the bear bodkin. Now this is a term I, I get from uh, Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. There's a character in there, the Duke, who is an absolute fraud, just a complete rogue, lovable, charming, but, you know, um, who at one point says, well, we will put on the famous, we will raise some money uh, to, by putting on the famous to be or not to be soliloquy from Hamlet. And they put on this big show and he says, to be or not to be, that is the bear bodkin. And it just goes downhill from there. If, if you know anything about Shakespeare, this is just ridiculous. Basically, he doesn't know the soliloquy. He knows enough about it to sort of jumble together something for an audience that has no idea what he's talking about. And he sounds so august and proper. 
we see this very often on, well, YouTube videos, but also in other articles where people are using Technobabble to gain credentials that they really don't deserve and they really don't understand the subject at hand. I'll pick on flat earthers again because, well, again, this is a topic that I think we can all agree on. Uh, one of the problems that they have in describing a flat earth is that the atmosphere sticks to the planet and to the, the use of gravity. This, there's no reason this would happen if the earth was flat. And so many of them have come to say that the idea of an atmosphere without some kind of lid on it violates the second law of thermodynamics. And this is a very common argument that you'll find. When people make this argument, they insist that it, it violates the second law of the thermodynamics without really explaining that, or for that matter, the concept of entropy itself. And they might use a very simple Google-based definition, which involves states of matter and has nothing to do with the concepts of energy. But there you go. That's the bare bodkin of the situation. They don't really sit down and explain it. They probably can't. But are they genuinely trying to defraud somebody, or do they just not know and being very stubborn? It doesn't matter. The point is, is that you can just ignore this and move on with your life, and that's probably the best thing to do. Going back to health matters, there is something that, that shows up all the time. I mean, technobabble does not have to be big words. It is, I've seen this many times in health news where people talk about toxins in the human body and how to get rid of those toxins. And they never define what they mean by toxins. It appears that they're referring to heavy metals because the cure for toxins involves various changes in diet, meditation, whatever, but it usually involves a tremendous amount of what we would call chelating agents, uh, oxalic acid, EDTA, things like that. So those would only be effective against large metals. And it is true that we do pick up a fair amount of various metals during our life. Uh, lead is toxic, for sure. Mercury is a problem. But these chelating agents will also take out valuable minerals such as zinc and iron, leaving you anemic, which is a very bad thing in a time of a respiratory illness going around. So the failure to define what toxins are and how they are indeed affected by whatever you're proposing is a sure sign that they don't know what they're talking about in this, when you see a, a video or a presentation like this. And that's something that can be discarded. See, somebody who is a genuine expert will try to explain what's going on. I mean, we have an RNA-based virus circulating around. What does that mean? How is it different from other DNA-based viruses? I've seen some interesting videos explaining him. They don't always do a great job, okay? But based on your level of comfort, you can decide for yourself. The point is, is that there are methods for explaining difficult subjects in plain language. The craft that I practice now is something which is, well, we've been working on this for a very long time. The flood of information needs to be filled with a certain amount of technical stuff. That's why I have a job. That's where it all comes from. We have some idea how to do it. A simple explanation that follows the immediate introduction of a concept and then going on from there and just using that concept is the basic way to go. Insisting on a definition of it uh, offhand, or insisting that some, it violates a second law of thermodynamics, or it's all about toxins, without defining them, is the first clue that there is something wrong. Now, if there are no definitions whatsoever, I would say just ignore it. Okay, it's either wrong or it's not for you. But we all need to figure out ways of understanding very complicated things, such as economics. And I have been guilty of this too. For example, some people have uh, said to me in private, you talk about deflation all the time. What do you mean by that? Why is it so difficult? Hmm. Uh, I didn't realize that the process of prices actually going down all the time 
which is all deflation is, money becomes more valuable, prices go down, was something I needed to dwell on. I deliberately chose not to focus on the carry trade or the process of money being loaned from areas of small, low interest rates, such as the United States, to places that have higher interest rates, like China, because it's very complicated and very difficult. And I glossed over this topic and probably should go back and revisit it because this is the process by which the Federal Reserve became the central bank of the planet, which got us into this situation. I probably need to go back and do that again, and I probably will. It's difficult to explain, but it's how we're all on the hook. So all of us make this mistake. You have to pick and choose what you're going to explain, what you think the audience knows, and what needs to have some uh, uh, level of understanding. But you can usually tell if somebody is trying to explain or trying to force an opinion. The use of technobabble can be used to create the, the bear bodkin, the illusion that somebody knows what they're talking about when they really don't. It's a very simple matter of if you don't understand something because they haven't explained it, either ignore it or go back and look it up for yourself. I hope that this is useful, but I'd like to know how you do things. Or do you have ways of filtering through subject matters that you just really don't understand yourself? We could talk about it. Thank you.